hello and welcome to Wildcat Week. I'm Roger Alcock. While IW football was on the road for yet another week, Silas Weghorse was there and he files this recap. Wildcat football spoiled another homecoming on the road. The Wildcats traveled to Bourbon, Illinois to take on the Tigers of Olivet Nazarene University. The Tigers came out strong in the first quarter, putting up two touchdowns to the Wildcats' one field goal. The Wildcat defense was struggling to stop the Tigers' offense as the game moved into the second quarter with a score of 14-3. The Wildcat offense picked up where the defense was lacking. Zach Blair completed pass after pass to put the ball in the end zone. The Wildcats were down 10-14 with 9.24 left in the half. The Wildcat defense slowed the Olivet offense, but even after a few penalties, the Tigers scored with 2 minutes and 30 seconds left in the second quarter. After that, it was a shootout between the Wildcats and the Tigers. The Wildcats ran the ball up the field and scored in just over a minute, and with just a minute 14 left in the half, the Tigers passed the ball into the end zone, making the score 28-17 at the half. The Wildcat defense came out of the locker room at halftime a different team. Linebacker Adam Shantz said the energy of the game changed as the Wildcat defense forced a safety against the Tigers. That was huge. I mean, that, that really changed the changed the, the intensity on our on the defense side and for the team. A big hats off to Ishmael for making a big play. I mean, that kind of stuff, that changes the game uh, energy-wise, and that definitely came to our side. Olivet's homecoming crowd had grown silent, and the Wildcats were fired up. Wide receiver Amon Clark said the defense really showed out in the second half. Just coming out of half, you know, the defense, they got a good stop. And then they, they just did great this whole second half. Uh, we knew that uh, offense was rolling, and we knew that the defense would pick it up. And we had, we had no worry. Zach Blair connected with Braden Smith in the end zone and scored, putting IWU in the lead with a score of 33-28 to through the third quarter. Center Caleb Ruffner credited the whole offensive effort. It was, big, it was big for the offensive line to come out and just hit them hard. And Zach Blair and our right receivers were clicking on all cylinders, and Devadi was running the ball really hard. The Tigers weren't out of this cat fight yet. At the beginning of the fourth quarter, they scored after a standoff against the Wildcat defense. The offense worked in perfect unison, moving the ball up the field and scoring off a trick play. Zach Blair passed the ball to Braden Smith, and Smith lobbed a floater to Dante Henderson to secure the game at 40-36. to I was thinking, is it going to ever get to me? Like, I was just so wide open. I was like, he can't, he can't mess this pass up. I'm too open. It was, it was ugly. I, I threw it better in practice, but it got there, and it, it was a good play call. So The Tigers' stands cleared out quickly as the Wildcats shut down their offense and brought home the win. After dampening Olivet's school spirit, schools may think twice before inviting the Wildcats to their homecoming. For Wildcat Week, I'm Silas Wakehorse. All right, well, thank you, Silas, for that report. And now here to break down that game and talk a little more in detail is the head coach of the Wildcats, Jordan Langs, and coach... Uh, I don't know, uh, in a year of first and of a year of a lot of big things, this was a really big win for a lot of reasons. And uh, um, first of all, just congratulations on the win, but it has to feel a little extra special yeah, to go on it, the road and get that win. Yeah, it's a big time win for the program, for the university. I mean, we're Olivet's undefeated in their side of the conference. They're, they're, they're playing for a playoff spot this weekend. They win a game this weekend, they're going to the playoffs. So for us to go and play that kind of caliber of team on the road, and again, persevere. And, and honestly, I think the game was won last week at Siena Heights when we had to persevere. Mm -hmm. We persevered without a win. And the same perseverance uh, came back up and our kids executed this time. You know, one of the things Silas mentioned is really um, the play of the defense in the second half. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that because we see a lot of offensive highlights. But your defense, even though it gave up, what, the 28 points in the first half, you, there were some things they were doing well in the first half just clean things up in the second half. And they, they really played an outstanding second half of football. Yeah, schematically, we didn't change up a ton. We changed up a little bit how we played some of their formations. Our kids just really played hard, stuck with the plan and trusted it. Changed up our philosophy on third down a little bit, which really got us the ball back and got rid of the penalties. Penalties, they gained five first downs on penalties in the first half alone. So that's something that's uncharacteristic of us, and it cannot become who we are. So really proud of our kids buying in and finishing it defensively in the second half. I think a lot of people were there can point to a, a moment in that game where momentum shifted it, early in the third quarter when the defense got the safety, those two points. You hadn't taken the lead yet, but you had taken the momentum. But that was, there was really a series in there that, to me, was some of the best football I've seen from this team in terms of, first of all, a great special teams play on the punt from Ben to, to nail them deep. The defense comes up with a safety. 
But then on that possession, a good return again from special teams, and then the offense produces the touchdown. And, and, and that whole team effort right there was big time. Yeah, and I think coming out of half, we all knew we had to get the ball back to the offense. We had not stopped them yet. And the offense did a nice job eliminating their possessions in the first half. We got the stop, our offense didn't score, and then the coffin corner with the, with the punt sets up the safety, two points, come back, score in the next possession, seven points, made a nine-point swing in a mm -hmm. big game like that is big time. And then we got the turnover later in the game defensively, and the, the kudos to the offense. Coach Terraza said just a phenomenal plan and, and just executed it well and kept us on pace. And then once we caught up defensively, we felt really confident in our abilities. Going into the fourth quarter, Olivet does score a touchdown to regain the lead, but we saw the highlight where Braden Smith, who had actually caught two touchdown passes in this game, throws for that one. Um, uh, I know that, that play you have to I'm sure I've practiced a long time, but how do you know when, okay, this is the time to call it? Yeah, I mean, we have been practicing all year, and it, it takes guts to call it, it especially <laughs> when you have a quarterback as good as Zach. And it's really about where we're sitting in field position-wise. If you get too close to the end zone, you can't run it. You, you run it too far mm -hmm. back, brain can't get it there. So it's about field position and where we're at in the field and just timing. We needed a spark, and we knew that we had something in our back pocket for third down if we needed it. And it was a gutsy call by Coach T and well executed by those guys. You know, one guy we haven't talked that much about, and I want to talk about Zach Blair. You mentioned his big day, you know, the 359 yards and uh, three touchdown passes. Only 91 yards, people would say only 91 yards from Devodny, but on 22 carries, you had to have that mix in there. And, and I can only think of maybe one play where he didn't get positive yards. Maybe there's more than that, but it he was falling forward and he was getting – three and four and five yard chunks. Yeah, and, and for us to be balanced on offense, part of it is even if the pass game is, is that much more what, what seems to be productive, you've got to continue to stay committed so that you that you keep them on their heels. And Devani only had 92, but also the first play, first or second play of the game, we throw the swing pass to him and he puts their, you know, breaks the tackle of one of their mm -hmm. best players and gains positive yards. And just the threat that he has mm -hmm. become totally changes the way defense can approach us. So I thought, I thought the offense did a nice job of doing, running the ball enough, but when you when you got a hot hand like Zach and Braden and Dante were, you've got to make sure you're, you're not void and getting them the ball too. It was really, I thought offensively, you had the mix of solid drives and then the big plays, and, and you kept their defense off balance. Yeah, I, I, think that's the, I think that's kind of how Coach T wants to be. We want to be a team that can be uh, productive and efficient, which is what we were completing a lot of those passes on the early downs. So if we're completing passes on first and second down, you've got to decide as a defense how we're going to defend you. Do you, de do you de try to defend the run on the first down like you do with a lot of offenses, or do you have to change something up? And them not knowing what they had to defend in the early downs really made a big difference. Let's go back to defensive side really quick. Uh, Ishmael Vila had nine tackles on the day. He, he got credit for the safety. He's being held, but got credit for the safety. Brevin Beard, again, had nine tackles, but comes up with a big interception. He was solid in run, uh, run support. So um, it's kind of neat to see this defense growing up a little bit as we go along. Yeah, and I think what I, when we meet with them later today, I'm going to tell them that that defense is starting to build their brand, you mm -hmm. know, because as a, as a defense and as a startup, you can't hide. It doesn't, you don't get to decide what you do in every single play. You have to react to it. And, we're, we're building a brand on defense of becoming tough and being fighters and doing it disciplined. And our, our talent and our physical ability is going to just mm -hmm. continue to increase as the years go on. So really proud of Brevin and Ishmael. Those guys led us with their intensity. And then I thought uh, Justin Johnson in the mm -hmm. boundary corner, we needed him to play really solid, and he did. And, and he's one that actually tipped the pass for the interception. So just proud of the kids' execution. Well, again, Coach, congratulations on the big victory, and uh, good luck next week. Thanks. As we mentioned next week, or as I should mention, Wildcat football will take on Concordia this Saturday. The game time is at 1 p.m. That'll be up in Ann Arbor, Michigan, Saturday, November the 3rd. Well, when we come back, we'll talk to some players from the volleyball team. So don't go away. Welcome back to Wildcat Week. Women's volleyball has had an outstanding season so far. And here now to join us from that team are the sisters of Alexis and Abigail Rutt. And so ladies first, welcome to Wildcat Week. Abigail, I know you watch faithfully. Yeah. <laughs> no, not really. No, but sometimes when Coach Moats yeah. is on. Yes, I have seen it. Absolutely. First of all, 
let's uh, introduce yourselves to uh, the audience and just uh, we'll start with you first Alexis but just give us an idea of um, where you're from what your hometown is and what you're studying here and maybe what you would like to do in the future well my name is Alexis Rutt and I'm a senior nursing major at Indiana Wesleyan mm -hmm. and we're both from Elizabethtown Pennsylvania right near um, Hershey chocolate actually oh. so it's quite a ways away but it's really fun <laughs> going back home um, so and so you're a senior nursing major. Mm -hmm. Abigail, you're what year? I'm a sophomore in the, I'm majoring in media communication. So, so uh, a major in media communication. So next year, maybe you can host Wildcat Week. I don't know. I don't think I'd be too good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I like to be more behind the scenes. Well, I wanted to ask you, Alexis, as a senior, mm -hmm. I mean, four or five years ago, you're looking at colleges, you want to play volleyball. Maybe give us an, a, an idea of like how you heard about Indiana Wesleyan and maybe when you were looking, why did you choose IW and what, maybe what were the big factors for you? When I was looking for colleges, um, one of my friends visited Taylor University mm -hmm. and she told me that she also stopped by Indiana Wesleyan. It was like 20 minutes away and I was like, I've never heard of that before. So I looked it up and Taylor's really popular back home. We have like some connections, mm -hmm. but I was really interested because of their super strong um, nursing program. And then I contacted the volleyball team and coach called me and she's just so welcoming and then I got a visit and I just loved it here. It's a beautiful campus and just a great program. Well, Alexis, we're getting a chance to watch a little bit of the highlights from you on senior, uh, senior day the other day against Grace. And uh, um, I was gonna ask you, you know, you, you talk both about athletics and academics. Um, being a nursing major for four years while you're playing volleyball, I mean, that's a, that's not an easy thing to do, but you've been able to manage it and do it well. Is there a key to that, or what's that experience been like? It's been a challenge, especially near the beginning, but I think overall it's really taught me a lot of time management skills and gave me a lot of experience um, communicating like my scheduling mm -hmm. and like working with coaches and working with my professors. But I think overall I've loved getting the opportunity to be on the volleyball mm -hmm. team at the same time as doing nursing because um, it's really grown me as a person. Now, Abigail, so your sister comes to school here. Yeah. So obviously <laughs> there's that connection, but sometimes people like would love to go to college, wouldn't play with their sibling. Sometimes people are like, well, I want to do my own thing. What was that process like for you? Um, so, you know, like when you go out, you visit your siblings, mm -hmm. you kind of, it kind of feels like home just because, mm -hmm. you know, you have siblings there and you visit that, there a lot. Um, and so ever since when she first came here, I always thought, oh, I could see that as a school I could go to. And then not until like the coach was mm. interested in me that I was like, oh, I could see myself here. And then their program, um, how they had what I wanted to study. Uh, and then just like to play with her again mm -hmm. two more years. Like after high school was over, we had a great high school season mm -hmm. before she left. And I it just the thought of playing with her again was really awesome to, that I thought. And I mean, I'm so thankful for it. And it it's great. interesting you say that because I can think of several sports where we've had siblings who have mm -hmm. been able to play together. And I think all of them have time says, told me what a great opportunity it is for them and actually for their parents because yeah. that, you know, <laughs> totally. you're at the yeah. same place. So it, it, it kind of kept, uh, was able, you know, for parents able to see you guys play. This was a moment <laughs> we're watching out in the Grace game that was just a crazy volley. And I think, mm -hmm. Abigail, you had multiple digs in this, but. For a fan, this looks like a ton of fun and it's exciting, but I gotta ask you as a player, it's gotta be nerve wracking to have these kind of volleys. Yeah, especially when it's like those, when it's as long, like you wanna win that point yeah. then because it's such a battle. So when you do win it, that's just, it's so exciting. Now, just so people know, you're you're in the red, you're a libero, so that red jersey uh, makes it a little more identifiable, but mm -hmm. being a libero is kind of a special uh, responsibility because you know, you're relied on to do a lot of different things, aren't you? Yeah. It's kind of, I kind of, I'm like the the quarterback of the back mm -hmm. row. I have right. to be in charge of the defense and I have to be a leader in the back row in that kind of area. And it does put a little more pressure on me to be more consistent in my serve receive and my digs because I, I if I'm already in that position, I have to show up and play. Mm -hmm. All right, let me ask you this, Alexa, uh, Alexis, excuse me. The game prior to that, the Grace game against Marion, their top ranked team in the conference, top 20 team in the nation. They come into uh, uh, into uh, Lucky Arena on Friday night. Unbelievable match. I, there's been some yeah. good, great matches over your career here, but Best that one, one by home, far, yeah. It, it was intense. I want yeah. to ask you about the fourth set because oh, yeah. you guys were down two sets to one. 
35 to 33. I've never heard of a set going that I've that never long. been part of that. Yeah, that was so cool. What, was there a moment in that match where you guys like, we're going to win this. We've got this. It was actually really neat because I know we were up about 19, 12, and then they mm -hmm. came back, and they were up probably like 21, mm -hmm. 22, 22, 21. And there was actually a point, like, we had multiple game points mm -hmm. or set points, and um, then it flipped around and they had match point a couple times. But it was really neat because although we're a young team, I felt like we had, like, this – equal mentality that we just knew we were going to pull it off like we were talking to the girls after the game and they were all like I just felt like so unified that mm -hmm. game and we all trusted each other to do our roles to pull it through and it didn't feel like a lot of tension and nervousness but just like a fun match well that's definitely the the I think the feeling and the yeah. uh, unified uh, uh, team mm -hmm. that we hope we see you guys uh, display in the in the postseason now yeah. got to mention this after a two and nine start the wildcats are on a 19 to two streak and so a great way to finish out mm -hmm. this part of the regular season now going to postseason so good luck in the postseason thank you thank you all right as i mentioned the volleyball team will be back in action on saturday november the third they'll be hosting the opening round match of the crossroads league tournament as they take on spring arbor 7 p.m. in Lucky Arena on Saturday night. Be sure to come on out and watch some great volleyball. Well, when we come back, Michaela Woodfork will be here to bring us the breakdown, and we'll take a look at what a football road game entails. Well, welcome back to Wildcat Week different sports competing on this campus and here to help us bring us up to date in a two-minute drill we welcome Michaela Woodfork with the breakdown. Thanks Roger. The Wildcats had a pretty good week this week. The golf team spent two days at the Whistling Straits Intercollegiate Championship to end their fall seasons. The women finished third out of six teams at 680. Taylor came in first with 645 and Northwestern came in second at 652. Haley Sakenga led the Wildcats in the two days with a total score of 162, earning her a spot on the all-tournament team. McKenna Hostetler was one point behind her with a score of 163, and Shelly Schaefer was at 176. The men finished sixth out of 17 teams. Cameron Lushka shot a 152, allowing the Wildcats to move up one spot after round one. Patrick Hardy shot a 158, and Ryan Cahill shot a 164. Both the men's and women's soccer teams showed out against Goshen. The men beat the Goshen Maple Leafs 3-2. Felipe Mendonca played another great game with two goals and one assist, making this his second multi-goal game of the season. He scored his first goal in the 20th minute and his second in the 47th minute, and Sammy Conti scored off of Mendonca's assist in the 49th minute. The women beat Goshen 2-0. Hannah Severs made the first goal in the 38th minute and then made an assist to Tia Sanford in the 75th minute for the second goal. Women's swimming had a dual meet at Franklin College where they beat Anderson University 120-77 to in their first meet but fell to Franklin in the second with a score of 165-56. to Sydney Darnell led the way for the team once again, allowing her to qualify for two more events in the 2019 NAIA Swim Championships. The football team was down at Olivet Nazarene for the Tigers' homecoming. They beat the Tigers 40-36, making it the program's biggest road win. Braden Smith threw a 36-yard pass to Dante Henderson with just under 10 minutes left on the clock to win the game. The Lady Wildcats had their first week of basketball and got off to a pretty rough start. They lost to the number one team, Concordia, 81 to 68, and fell just short to the number 22 team, Cardinal Stritch, at 57 to 51. Men's basketball had a big game against Cornerstone and won 85 to 62. Evan Maxwell scored a game high 33 points, one point away from his career high 34 points, which was, he achieved last year. And finally, women's volleyball was pretty busy this week with three games all resulting in a win. Out of the three games, the second game on Friday versus Marion was definitely the toughest matchup. The game went to five sets, causing the whole game to last over two hours. 
Kelly Gerbert was able to come through for the Wildcats serving an ace to end the game and send the, every Wildcat in the stadium to celebrate. The Wildcats now stand at number three in the Crossroads League. Well, that's all I have for you this week on The Breakdown. Back to you, Roger. Well, thanks, Michaela. We look forward to The Breakdown each week. Well, you've heard of home field advantage, but as you saw earlier in the show, going on the road is starting to pay off for the Wildcats football team. Randall King rode along to see how our frequent bussers are building miles of success. Stepping into the real world of college football means buses on the road. You leave your comfortable home and see if your game can travel. For the IWU players, it's an overnight routine many never experienced in high school. For the coaches and managers, it's moving a small army four weeks in a row. And for head coach Jordan Langs, it's packing up the Wildcat culture and adding to it. This is continuous, you know, 24 hours continuously spent with them, which is great for our kids to see us in a little bit of different light, but it's also good because our kids get to be with each other even a little bit more. Three and a half hours later, more packing and unpacking. Routine and rest are part of the game plan. And by morning, food. Every minute of the game day routine focuses towards kickoff and players say it all builds bonds. You're just constantly surrounded by these people and uh, you're just forced to go closer to each other and it's just, it just helps. We get to spend a lot more time with each other than we probably would if we were back at campus. You know, we'd probably just be in our rooms playing our video games or something. Definitely a long bus trip. You have a lot of time together and so you really get to um, figure out who each other are. Say go, go. There's go. no walkthrough on the other field, so a hotel parking lot has to do. Good. And then back on the bus. There's also no parade when you show up on the other guy's campus. But Wildcats say they've gotten used to being the new kids with a few surprises. I kind of relish in that, you know, the opportunity to be the bad guy. So they're homecoming day, so they're going to have a big crowd, a lot of energy here, so it'll be, it'll be fun for both teams. And then preparation is over. The band and the homecoming crowd aren't there for you. It's time to introduce Wildcat football once again. The worst thing you can do is not, right, and say, hey, can I come into your home? Am I supposed to be here or not? That's not what we're going to be about. You understand me? You show up and you freaking kick the door. You kick it down. And you sit right here. Execute on three. One, two, three. Execute. When game time finally comes, focus continues. Players do their jobs, but still cheer the work of their peers. And when the game is turning around, no traveling fans can yell any louder than teammates. Game by game, step by step, a program is becoming a team. I told all the fans at halftime, we ain't done yet. <laughs> On the field, learning how to win. Off the field, learning how to live, together with purpose. I'll tell you why this place is special. We do not quit. You are 18, 19, and 20 year olds. You have set the program in a great trajectory because your buy-in and because your effort and your love for one another. That's why. Really, 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 really proud of you. Love you guys. All right, bye guys. And then, after celebration, there's more food and more buses. But the road has made these players better. It's not new anymore to be a Wildcat football player, but it is still special. In Bourbon A, Illinois, Randall King for Wildcat Week. Certainly had a great time on the road with the Wildcats and of course one more road game yet to come. Well, that's all we have for you on this episode of Wildcat Week. If you'd like to see more of Wildcat Week, you can visit our website, WIWTV.com. There you can watch past episodes and connect with us online. Once again, that is WIWTV.com. And you can stay connected with all our local programming by subscribing to our YouTube channel, that's WIWTV51. Well, we look forward to seeing you next week. So for all of us here, thanks for watching Wildcat. Media.